is there, and uh, there are several copies in the back of the chapel if you'd like to take one on your way out. You're most welcome. So, welcome everyone. Glad to see you. It's a great day. Beautiful weather. Who could ask for more? Right? <laughs> so, uh, if you want to stand now, I celebrate this Father Dan Agnar. We would all like you to sing too. All right, don't just mouth, sing. <laughs> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So that we may celebrate this Mass more fruitfully and worthily, let us ask the Lord for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in, in the highest, highest and on, on earth peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we, we adore you, you we glorify you. you. We, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O God, Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, 
who willed the Paschal mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and led me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me in the center of the plain, which was now filled with bones. He made me walk among the bones in every direction so that I saw how many they were on the surface of the plain, how dry they were. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones come to life? I answered, Lord God, you alone know that. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. See, I will bring spirit into you that you may come to life. I will put sinews upon you, make flesh grow over you, cover you with skin, and put spirit in you, so that you may come to life and know that I am the Lord. I, Ezekiel, prophesied as I had been told, and even as I was prophesying, I heard a noise it was a rattling as the bones came together, bone joining bone. I saw the sinews and the flesh come upon them, and the skin cover them, but there was no spirit in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the spirit, prophesy, son of man, and say to the spirit, thus says the Lord God, from the four winds come, O Spirit, and breathe into these slain that they may come to life. I prophesied as I had been told, and the Spirit came into them. They came alive and stood upright, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They have been saying, Our bones are dried up. Our hope is lost, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Send 
out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Deuxième lecture, lecture de la lettre de Saint Paul aux Romains, chapitre 8, versets 22 à 27. Or, nous savons que jusqu'à ce jour, la création tout entière soupire et souffre les douleurs de l'enfantement. Et ce n'est pas elle seulement, mais nous aussi, qui avons les prémices de l'esprit. Nous aussi, nous soupirons à nous-mêmes en attendant l'adoption, la rédemption de notre corps. Car c'est en espérance que nous sommes sauvés. Or, l'espérance qu'on voit n'est plus l'espérance. Ce qu'on voit, peut-on espérer encore? Mais si nous espérons ce que nous ne voyons pas, nous l'attendons avec persévérance. De même aussi, l'Esprit nous aide dans notre faiblesse, car nous ne savons pas ce qu'il nous convient de demander dans nos prières, mais l'Esprit lui-même intercède par des soupirs inexprimables. Et celui qui sent les cœurs connaît quelle est la pensée de l'Esprit parce que c'est selon Dieu qu'il intercède en faveur des saints. C'était la parole du Seigneur. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And that not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that sees is not hope, for who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. For a scripture says, Rivers of living water shall flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit, that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, fill us with your spirit that we may know that you are the Lord. This afternoon, it is my honor to share a few reflections on this wonderful event where we celebrate the lives of 17 men who we call brothers. We also celebrate today the life of the congregation and the new life of Pentecost in the church. We have heard the story of Ezekiel, his ordinary and simple faith, Paul's letter to the Romans, in which he acknowledges the pain of living a life of Christ, similar to that of childbirth, yet also the filling with the spirit of hope. And finally, in John's Gospel, the wonderful image of the uh, living water representing the Spirit, a double invitation to us. And when we examine closely the lives of our jubilarians, we rejoice in how each captures a bit of that spirit of today's readings. Men of faith, men of hope, who lived and continue to live in the spirit. We celebrate 925 years of dedication to in God's service that our brothers gave the church on four continents, extending from Kanaka, Belgium, to Louisville, Kentucky, from Lekasi and Kasenga in Congo, to Los Angeles and Berkeley in California, from Cochabamba, Bolivia, to Boston, Massachusetts, from Brooklyn, New York, to the Rosebud Reservation in South Dakota, from Orangeburg, South Carolina, to Jessup, Maryland. It is only fitting, brothers, that we reverence your stories. You were moved and continue to be moved by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. In the words of our fundamental principles, you responded to the call of God, your Father, to live a life of love in faith and trust as disciples of Jesus in the congregation of the Zavarian brothers. I am very confident that the Spirit has guided each of you, be it for the past 75 years, as in the case of Brother Bede, or for the past 25 years, 
as is in the case of Frère Crispin and Frère Francois uh, Musungo in Congo. It is so appropriate that we remember your lives as the Varian brothers in the context of the Eucharist. For you responded to Jesus' exhortation at the Last Supper to do this in memory of me. Jesus was not referring solely to the ritual of the bread and wine. He was referring to a summary of his whole life. Do this in memory of me. My life of compassion, my life of service to others, my life of seeking justice for the oppressed, my life of prayer when I went to deserted places to contemplate and to pray to the Father. Do this in memory of me is what your lives have been about. Do all in his memory and you have done that. Your life of service is grounded in faith and imitates the Lord's. I am confident that you looked at those who serve you with the heart of Christ's compassion. And with his passion, you worked for those who have no voice in our society, that they would experience the love and justice of God's reign. Each of you stood ready, in the words of the fundamental principles, to respond to the prompting of the Spirit. When asked if you are available for God to become more present in your life, and in through you to the world. It's a question that disturbs. It's a question I have to ask myself every day. We all do. There are no exemptions from the call of the Spirit or the life in the Spirit. Brothers, the way each of you responded to the Holy Spirit gives me the inspiration I need to do so in my own life. You responded through your ministries, whether you were teaching or counseling in one of our schools, or ministering to street kids in Likasi or Cochabamba, or accompanying others in spiritual journeys at Xavier Center in Danvers, or at the Institute of Spirituality and Worship in Berkeley, or ministering to African Americans in Orangeburg, or healing broken lives of the Lakota Indians, young and old, on the Rosebud Reservation. Gradually, I am sure you realized that the cost of your discipleship is your very life, freely consecrated to God in poverty, celibacy, and obedience, and offered to the world as a sign of God's love and care. As a community of religious brothers, that is our mission. Your lives edify us all. Gradually, I am sure you realize that the cost of your discipleship is your very life. But life is what we give to others. In the first reading of the prophet uh, uh, Ezekiel, it reminds us that even in our relationship with God, there are times when, like dry bones, we are faced with what appears to be impossible situations. There are times when we get separated from the life-giving presence of God, when we feel cut off, isolated, lifeless, and maybe even dry and dead. Such moments are a part and parcel of the human condition. Ezekiel, like so many of you, shows us how to respond. Even in the desolation, Ezekiel allowed the spirit to lead him out to the desert plain filled with the dry bones. And when God asked him, can these bones come to life, Ezekiel? His response was one of faith. He does not second guess God or hedge a bet. He just simply says, Lord, you alone know. And Ezekiel continues to do what God asks and to prophesy. We know that the dry bones, a miracle took place. Huh? As we re read, the bones come together, sinew, muscle, skin over them yet there was something lacking, that spirit. Then the Lord asked him again to prophesy to the spirit, and he does. God, and while doing that, the spirit enters the bodies, 
and God liberates them from death and puts the spirit into them. New life and faith in the most desolate situation. I am sure that like Ezekiel, brothers, you have encountered moments of desolation, moments where we all have in our life as religious brothers. We are not exempt from the human condition. Our founder, Theodore James Riken, knew this. In the words of the fundamental principles, we read the echo of his encouragement. Day by day, you will need to renew your response. Do not become discouraged over the difficulties you encounter in your life of evangelical service. Brothers, day by day, for the past 75, 70, 60, 50, and 25 years, you have renewed your response. We are who we are as a congregation because of you, and for that we thank you. In the letter of Romans, Paul notes what we need for endurance is perseverance in difficult times, so well exemplified in the lives of our jubilarians. But Paul takes note of the hope, hope for those things we cannot see, the spiritual realities of our life as religious, Christ, truth, compassion, justice, humility, zeal, things that the world does not, does not really readily accept. It is through our living in the spirit and our awareness of the spirit living in us, especially that latter, becoming aware of the spirit living in each of us, that we, um, we experience the liberation of Christ offers to us from sin, from death, from meaninglessness. In the gospel, John presents a refreshing image of the living water by contrast to the opening image of the de uh, desert with the dry bones. Jesus is speaking to the disciples just a few days before his crucifixion and his uh, ultimate from his resurrection. And he gives us an invita two invitations. Let anyone come to me who thirsts. Then he goes on to the second invitation and drink. According to some scholars, what Jesus is inviting us to is a deeper relationship with him that requires us to know our thirst, to know ourselves, our dryness, what's going on in our own re relationships, isolation and sinfulness. And it's an invitation to be transparent with the Lord and to drink the living water, which is Christ's spirit that revivifies and gives life. Drink, open yourselves and receive the spirit. As jubilarians, your lives encourage and edify us as a congregation. For you are, and for what you are and for what you have done, continue to do, we thank you with grateful hearts. Now, what does today mean in terms of the life of the congregation? First, I am very confident that for the last 18 years, the Holy Spirit has been pushing, nudging, and inspiring us to do something, to something new as a congregation, to new life. We could be like Ezekiel and say, Lord, only you know maybe that's the posture we have to take. We don't know quite what the future of the congregation looks like. We've all been to the desert plain. We've all seen the dry bones. And anyone here with arthritis knows what that means. Sometimes the heavy feelings of desolation can be overwhelming. The question I feel each of us has to answer individually and also together as a congregation is, Am I, are we, willing to be led by the Spirit? We do, know, we do know that we need faith, perseverance, and trust to continue to prophesy as Ezekiel did. But what, we are called, what are we called to prophesy? We are called, I believe, to prophesy the gift we have received from God in the charism of our Founder. We are called to prophesy a life of humility and simplicity. 
None of us know where the Spirit is leading us. We do know that we need faith of, uh, of uh, Ezekiel to say, Lord, you alone know, lead us. You know we are also called to prophesy a life of contemplation and service, the life of Mary and Martha. Together we need to let the Holy Spirit lead us and urge us to bless and let go of the past that we cannot relive and in hope to embrace the future which we cannot see. Each of us, without exception, is called to the same life of fidelity to our vocation as the Varian brothers that our Jubilarians have shown us. We thank you, brothers, for all you are and all you have done. Together we say, Lord, you alone know, let your spirit lead us. This I do know, we need each other. We invite now Brother Edward and the brothers renewing their vows to stand. I invite the uh, general counselors who are not jubilarians uh, to come up with me. Raphael. Two counselors who are Jubilarians, Brother Placid and Brother John. Let us pray to God our Father, giver of grace and perseverance. We pray for these servants who intend to renew their vows today in the presence of the church. We ask you, Lord, to look upon these, your servants, whom you have called in your providence to follow the footsteps of your Son most, more closely. In your mercy, grant that they, who have eagerly set out on the journey of your love, may complete that journey, persevering in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers, Although the waters of baptism have already consecrated you, God is also completely free to call you to a life of a brother of St. Francis Xavier. Are you freely resolved to respond to God's summons in turn through the renewal of your bond of perpetual profession? I am. I am. The cost of your discipleship will be your very life freely consecrated to God, and offered to the world as a sign of God's love and care. Are you resolved, with the grace of God, to renew your vow of celibacy, obedience, and poverty, and to per persevere in the consecration to the best of your ability forever? Amen. Renewal of the vows. You, if those who would could want to come up to the front could just do that. There are some that are going to be unable to do that, and that's fine. And I think this does call for an individual. Um, Constitutions 
I call upon the Lord to give me his grace to be faithful to my profession. And I call upon you, my brothers, to witness to my dedication and to assist me to be faithful. I ask you to remain stand and the brothers could stand and raise their hands in blessing together. Loving, Loving God, God, send your spirit, spirit upon our jubilarians who have recommitted themselves to the words of Christ your Son. Strengthen their understanding of the gospel and direct their lives to its counsels. May the law of love rule in their hearts and concern for others distinguish their lives so that they may be a witness to you and to your infinite love for all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The response to the general intercessions on this, the Vigil of Pentecost and our Jubilee celebration is, Lord, hear us. On this Pentecost Sunday, we pray that the Holy Spirit continue to guide and renew Christ's church throughout the world and continue to renew our Severian congregation, we pray. Lord, Lord hear us. For our Jubilarians present here and scattered throughout the world, and thanksgiving for their faithfulness in the combined total of 925 years of service to God, to church and congregation, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all in leadership positions in the church, especially Pope Francis, Ed Driscoll, John Hamilton, and the General Council, that they be open to the movement of the Holy Spirit and Jesus' example of servant leadership, we pray. Lord, hear us. For our congregation, that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we continue to implement the directives of the 27th General Chapter, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all the sick, especially for our brothers in nursing homes, that God be present to them in a special way, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all of our deceased brothers, especially for Brother Giles, for Bill Marinan, for our deceased relatives, for Jean Palika, the sister-in-law of Joe Palika, and for the friends and benefactors of our congregation, that they share in the fullness of the life of our risen Lord, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all of the benefactors of our congregation, in thanksgiving for their generosity and the support of our ministerial efforts, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all those attempting to discern a call from God to vowed religious life, that they be open to God's spirit, and for all those in initial and ongoing formation, we pray. Lord, hear us. For all who have contributed in any way to the festivities of this Jubilee celebration, we pray. Lord, hear us. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sing our preparation song, Loving Lord. Come dwell with 
with the congregation. Show us love and mercy. Help our weakness. Let us praise you. Small things grow in harmony. Lord, you blessed our humble founder with a love of serving you. Through the prayers of Francis, Savior, to your call may we be true. Reich and sought to spread your gospel, helping souls your light to see. May we live his dream and vision, small things grow in harmony. Brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands to the praise and glory of God's name. For I would the one who brought God's church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessings of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the Savior's command, no, excuse me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, <clears throat> Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that we too may, they, may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. <laughs> I always reach that place, and every book is different. I know, I uh, no, I won't go on forever. I'll go on forever if I do. <laughs> okay. takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe to return my life. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Paul. The blood of Christ. the blood of Christ.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Bill. And 
I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last Ave Regina. Save Regina, Mate Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Espes Nostra Save. A te clamamus, Exules Filii, Ante suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos convete. Et Jesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. O clemens, O Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may be always aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to serve the Lord with our lives. And thanks be to God. Before our concluding hymn, we'd like to say a few words about each of the jubilarians. And uh, Brother Bob Regal will call them for those that are here. There are 17 brothers celebrating jubilees this year. We're blessed to have 10 of them present with us. Uh, I'll read an inadequate uh, description, introduction, and when I finish, if you can come forward to receive you a gift from Ed, we will appreciate that. Brother Bede. Bede, 75 years as a Severian. This is before the Nazis went into Poland. <laughs> Oh my God. 75 years as a Severian began with about 30 years teaching and serving as an administrator at St. Francis de Sales in Utica, St. John's in Worcester, Boys Catholic in Malden, and here at Severian in Westwood. In 1972, he was part of a group of brothers who headed west, where Bede spent almost 30 years as a missionary and brother among the Lakota Sioux of South Dakota. 
certainly bringing a sense of pride to the founder whose dreams were finally being realized. Back in New England, he spent a couple of years at St. John's in Shrewsbury before going to Malden Catholic as a math tutor for several years. At the Varian House since 2009, Bede's primary mission has been that of prayer and fraternal support of his younger brothers. That means all of us. <laughs> You're going to bring it to him. We have three brothers celebrating 70 years among us, none of whom is able to be here today. However, Brother Peter Donahue. Peter spent about 25 years in Devarian institutions, from Louisville to Worcester, from Staten Island to Maryland, and serving the province for short emergency terms as head at Leonard Hall in Mount St. Joe. In 1973, he began a 12-year stay as educational supervisor at the Maryland House of Corrections in Jessup, followed by several years providing adult education to disenfranchised women in David, Kentucky, and Ridgeland, South Carolina. Peter then served eight years in prison ministry in California, seven of them as director of the Department of Detention Ministries for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and three as president of the American Catholic Correctional Chaplains Association. Later, he was a volunteer with Catholic Charities and at Zavarian in Brooklyn before moving to Zavarian House Community in 2009. Well, the John O'Brien. John enjoyed about 25 years as a successful teacher of English at Flage, at St. John's Prep, Cardinal Hayes, St. John's in Worcester, Boys Catholic in Malden, and here at Severian. In the early 70s, he was awarded his MLS from the Pratt Institute in New York and began serving as librarian at two Catholic colleges in New Jersey, at Malden Catholic, and at Bishop Fenwick in Peabody. After a two-year term as director of admissions at the Prep, he joined the staff at Milton as provincial archivist, followed by five years as librarian at St. John's in Shrewsbury. John moved to California in 1991 to be, first of all, archivist and then vice chancellor for the Diocese of Monterey. From the West Coast, he then went to the Gulf Coast, where he assisted the City of Venice Historical Documents Division, and then for several years at Barry University's Rice School for Pastoral Theology. For the Yosef Champ of the Knaka community in Belgium is also celebrating his 70th anniversary this year. He's the nephew of the late brother Bernard Casteline. Yosef spent 41 years in educational ministry in Belgium at the Institute in Bruges, in Haarlem, and in Knaka. Since retiring from school ministry, he has involved himself in youth and community groups, including a significant commitment to the mission of his sister, Sister Cecilia of the Augustinian Sisters in El Salvador. Joseph has also enjoyed radio and computer clubs and is quite active on the internet where he follows the development of the congregation in Belgium, in the United States, and in missionary areas. We have four brothers cel celebrating 60 anniversaries this year. With well, Paul Cullen, Paul was a teacher, coach, and administrator at St. John's Prep, Keith Academy, Malden Catholic, and Zavarian, and he served as novice master at Malden Catholic and Newton Highlands for three years. In 1984, he was part of the community opening our new mission in Orangeburg, South Carolina, where he began as the director of religious education for 15 years, and where he continues as a volunteer in community outreach and a co-facilitator of a parish group. Paul is one of our lifelong learners with a long list of summer schools, programs, and retreats attended. And he continues as, for 20 years and as a part-time student of computer programming in Orangeburg. In 1999, Paul was a recipient of the Pro Ecclesia and Pontifice Medal for the Diocese of Charleston. Paul. With the Thomas Fahey, Tom started his professional career in elementary education, first at St. Teresa's in Brooklyn for two years, then at St. Joseph's in Oradell for another two. 
In 1966, he became a member of the faculty of St. John's High School, where he taught and administered for 32 years. During his Shrewsbury years, he was the director of aspirants at the Riken Junior Eight while it was there. For 20 years, Tom has been a homilist for the Novena of Grace at St. John's Parish on Temple Street in Worcester. Since 1998, Tom was the director of admissions at Xavier in Middletown and is often found behind a microphone on the local radio station or at one of the school's athletic events. A loyal Hibernian, secret revealed, a loyal Hibernian, Tom is the former pro-life chair of the National Board of the AOH and the current chaplain for the AOH and the LAOH for the state of Connecticut. Well, Cornelius Hubbock, after eight years as a teacher and administrator at Severian in Brooklyn, Corny was named as principal of Riken High School in Leonardtown in 1968, as well as vicar provincial. He had nothing else to do. He was elected as provincial of the American Central Province in 1976 and served in that ministry until 1982. Throughout the 80s, Corny served in a variety of positions with the Conference of Major Superiors of Men. A 12-year relationship with the Jesuit School of Theology in Berkeley followed his term as provincial, with 10 of those years as co-director of the Institute for Spirituality and Worship. From 1989 to 2001, Corney served the congregation as vicar general, as well as six years as director of spiritual formation for Zavarian Brothers-sponsored schools. In 2000, he moved to Aurora, Canada as a member of the staff of the Southdown Institute, and for two years as director of the Carter Center for Excellence and Leadership. For the past 10 years, Corney has shared his skills in spirituality and human development with us as a member of the leadership team at the General Aid, and he recuperates in Florida from his knee operation. Well, the William Lyons. Bill began his teaching career in New York State at Archbishop Stepanak in White Plains, Notre Dame in Utica, and Cardinal Hayes in the Bronx. In 1970, he made his way to Massachusetts, where he taught for 15 years at Malden Catholic, then for a year at Bishop Fenwick in Peabody, and for 16 years at the Prep. Besides his language studies over the years, Bill also attended the Institute for Spirituality and Worship in Berkeley, and received a Master of Theological Studies at the Franciscan School of Theology there. In 1988, he completed the CPE program at Holy Cross Hospital in Silver Spring, Maryland, and was certified as a chaplain by the National Association of Catholic Chaplains. We have seven golden jubilarians this year. For the James Connolly, Jim spent a dozen of his first years in ministry at Xavier in Middletown, with a year at the prep and another year as a pastoral counselor for the Diocese of Norwich Community Ministries, before being appointed in 1984 as director of the new province mission in Orangeburg, South Carolina, where he was also campus minister for two local colleges and co-vicar for religious of the Diocese of Charleston. After a sabbatical and seven years in campus ministry at St. John's in Shrewsbury, Jim returned to Orangeburg for a second four-year period, adding a ministry as chaplain for the Lieber and Allendale Correctional Institute. He moved then to Venice, Florida for a year as director at the Sabbath House of Hospitality and Prayer before being named director of membership for the USA for five more years. In 2008, Jim joined the staff at the General Aid where he shared his expertise in personnel matters for four years before returning to Venice in 2012 to serve as director of the Cadiz community. <laughs> for the George Donnelly, George spent the first 13 years of his ministry teaching and performing 
a variety of school-related ministries at St. Joseph Regional High School in Montville, New Jersey, before arriving in Danvers in 1983. He then spent 21 years at the prep as a history teacher, guidance counselor, student trip coordinator, and moderator of the Student Activities Council. In 2004, George began a ministry as chaplain at Holy Family Hospital in Methuen and received his CPE from Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical Center in 2006. He was the Archdiocesan Director of Pastoral Care at South Shore Hospital in Weymouth for a year before being asked to serve as Director of Zavarian House. After six years working at Zavarian House, he moved to Venice last year, where he is currently volunteering at Doctors Hospital in Sarasota and at the Sarasota Food Pantry. Kenny Gorman. Kenny spent his first 18 years in ministry in Louisville, teaching at St. Xavier for, six, for 11 years, and then serving twice as director of religious education at parishes in Louisville. After serving as director of religious education at a parish in Orange Park, Florida for a year, he received his CPE at the University Medical Center in Jacksonville, Florida in 1999, and moved to hospital chaplaincy holding a variety of titles in the field of spiritual services at several hospitals in Illinois. After serving as group coordinator for spiritual services at Resurrection Senior Services in Chicago, in 2012 he became corporate director, spiritual care of Presence Health Systems in Illinois and Indiana. The John Hamilton. John's ministry began with six years as an English teacher at Xavier High School in Middletown before being appointed as Assistant Director of Formation at Xavier Center in Danvers and Province Director of Admissions for two years. <clears throat> he received a master's degree in formative spirituality from Duquesne University in 1980 and returned to Xavier Center as the Director of Formation, a position in which he served until last year. For over 25 of his years at Xavier Center, John served as co-director of Resources and Spiritual Formation. At the general chapter of 2013, John was elected to serve us as vicar. <laughs> Brother Richard Lunny. Richard's educational ministry began with 10 years in New Jersey, teaching at St. Joseph Elementary School in New Milford, St. Joseph Regional High School in Montville, and St. Pius X High School in Piscataway. In 1978, he became assistant principal at Bishop Fenwick High School in Peabody, and four years later was appointed as assistant headmaster for six years at St. John's Prep. Richard then served as headmaster at Trinity High School in Manchester, New Hampshire, from 1988 to 1994, followed by seven years as assistant principal at Bishop Connolly High School in Fall River, Massachusetts. From 2003 to 2007, Richard was principal of St. Paul's Elementary School in Hingham, Massachusetts. He's currently a consultant for Catholic schools in the Archdiocese of Boston and in the Fall River Diocese. He serves on the board of trustees at Malden Catholic and at two other Catholic schools in the Archdiocese and is chair of the Board of Directors of the Catholic Educators Collaborative at Stonehill College. <laughs> Brother Placide Ngoi Munanga. Placide received a graduate diploma in chemistry and biology in Lumumbashi in 1973 and became a teacher at our secondary school in Likasi, now known as L'Institut Tutazami. In 1984, the Archdiocese of Lumumbashi placed him in charge of youth ministry in Likasi, a position he held for 15 years. Since 1984, Placide has ministered in Severian formation as director of postulants and novice in Likasi and of scholastics in Lumumbashi. In 2002-2003, he was part of an international community 
living in Waltham, Massachusetts, and studying formative spirituality at Xavier Center in Danvers. After further studies in English, Placide was assigned in 2008 to Nairobi, where he directs the third year international postulancy program for Congolese and Kenyans before they go for their novitiate year in Kipushi, Congo. For the last 12 years, Placida has been chairman of the Congregation's Formation Commission in Africa. <laughs> For the Brian Vetter, Brian's ministry began with one year stays at Holy Cross School and at Holy Name School in Brooklyn before he moved to Mount St. Joseph in Baltimore for the next 22 years. Brian's next move was to Bolivia in 1992, where he has served in Carmen Pampa, Cochabamba, and Chinguri. Besides his ministry in the classroom, Brian has been dedicating himself for many years to the Amana Sayer Project for the Homeless, now in the city of Cochabamba. And Brian is not with us. Uh, confession time. Having Silver Jubilarian snuck up on me, I don't have anything prepared for Crispin Kibao Kabange and Francois Musango Kafindo, who celebrate 25 years among us for a total of 925 on four continents. God has been good. Ready to sing? <laughs> or do you want more biographies? <laughs> YouTube. We're all going to be on YouTube. 